one. So uh, thank Luca and Laurent uh, for entrusting me to lead the BWT Alpine Formula One team. It's a privilege and an honor to do so. And it was a privilege and an honor to work for a year in finishing fourth, um, like we did. Unfortunately, it took us until the last race. Uh, however, we did it. And uh, it is a big achievement. And we did move from fifth to fourth. And looking towards the future, um, like Luca and Laurent said, the gap to third was big. And we've, we've got to close that gap. But in order to do so, we must develop at a higher rate than any other Formula One team out there, which isn't easy to do, even the top three. For us to catch them, that means our development rate is higher. And that's what we're looking to do. And that's what this A523 <laughs> will hopefully do for all of us. They are beautiful cars. Talk me through the process. Talk me through what is so special about them. Well, a year ago, not quite a year ago, we set some targets for these cars. And we go through the process of target setting, and they have to be objectives that are attainable, but stretch. Because if you don't stretch, you won't catch the guys up front. And the beauty of it is they're lighter. Matt will come up later and talk you through the significant differences in these, these, this car versus last year. And there are differences. And what I liked about it is that the differences that we put into these cars will enable development. Last year, we had a very aggressive development cycle, which we achieved. This year, I think we've got even more potential. Well, looking at last year, 2022, fourth place in the Constructors' Championship, can we say the goal at that point was achieved? Yeah, we achieved our goal last year, for sure. Um, unfortunately, it took us till the last race, and it was a bit nerve-wracking. But, you know, if things aren't easy and you work hard for them, they're more rewarding when you get there. And we're not, to, we're not yet to where we want to be, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll get there. And what's the plan for the year ahead? So the year ahead is, like Laurent and Luca said, um, less DNFs, more points, hopefully some podiums, a lot closer to third and further away from fifth than we were yeah. in 2022. And I'm happy to say we've got the spirit, the racing spirit back at Enstone and Viri. We've got a great collaboration between the two places and soon on stage, we got a driver pairing that can do it. Yes, well, we will get to that in just a second. But just on a personal level, <laughs> how are you feeling about 2023? What are the feelings that are going through you right now? Well, I'm a racer at heart, and yeah. I've been a racer since uh, my young days. You're still young, mate, come on. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to start. And it seems like our winters are getting shorter and the racing season is getting longer. But I like that. Yeah. It keeps it moving. It's so exciting. You bring over 25 years of F1 experience. You have seen a lot of different teams. You've seen a lot of different personnel. What kind of potential did you see in the BWT Alpine F1 team yourself? Well, I've been there a year, and the, the thing that I like most about the, uh, the team is, like I said before, is its racing spirit. And when I got there, people talked about, and this was just a year ago, the Enstone spirit. Renault have won championships before Ottaviri and Enstone. And now that's changing. It's an Alpine spirit. And that Alpine spirit is one of racing, of collaborative effort for 1,200 or 1,250 people working together for one goal. And if we can all stay together, work a little bit harder, a little bit smarter, and make our development curve just a little bit steeper than our competition, we will soon get to where we want to be. And that's vying for world championships. And just finally, how many races for this beautiful pink car? Well, last year we had a few. <laughs> and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this year, we're going to have a few. You'll see this at the beginning. 
la vie en rose. Ouais. I've been practicing that for Parfait. days. Parfait. <laughs> But the Alpine Blue will be our predominant racer. So although we'll see pink, we'll mainly see blue. And pink is, is a color that's brought to us by BWT, our title partner. And the reason it's pink is because with the pink, they want to be noticed in, in, in the fact that they're helping change the world and reduce plastics. You know, they're all about filtering water at source so we don't go out and buy little bottles of, of, of plastic. And I think the Formula team, Formula One team itself, because we've eliminated plastics when we travel, I think we've saved 14, 15,000 bottles of plastic, just our team. So it can be done. And I want to thank BWT for being our, our great partner. And, and that's the reason for the pink. And our, our other main sponsor and, and partner, BW, uh, sorry, BP Castro, uh, we've been working closely with them. And I want to say, and uh, maybe it's the first time you've heard it, but I'm confident and I know that they've produced the best fuel and the best lubricants for our powertrain in Formula One. And with them, we get more performance. And I want to thank them. <laughs> Otmar, I love to hear it. La vie en rose and the Alpine spirit. As you said, for the first time ever, Alpine F1 team will have a full French lineup. So take a look at this. Please welcome the big stars, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. Hi. Hello, everyone. Bienvenue. Merci beaucoup. Good evening, gentlemen. It's great to have you with us tonight, um, Alpine's drivers. I know you've been really busy preparing for the season, right? Super busy, yeah. But it's been a, it's been a good winter. I think we are obviously very proud uh, of the work we have all achieved. Um, and, you know, the, the little bonus, obviously, is that we drove the car uh, already, which, uh, you know, has been obviously sensational to, to be driving again. You know, all these hours of work from everyone, from Viri to Enstone, thousands of people, you know, working to deliver this car. Uh, it's just been great, you know, to just let it go out the garage, uh, put full throttle for the first time. And, yeah, that gave me, obviously, the smile. I really get the impression from everyone. Everyone's just raring to go. Esteban, you personally had one of the best and most consistent seasons of your career last year, finishing eighth in the Drivers' Championship and, of course, helping the team get that fourth place in the Constructors' Championship. The goal, I assume, and I'm hearing this a lot, but it is to improve on all of that this year. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a consistent season and, and you know, strong, um, stronger than, you know, when the, the team came in Formula 1 in 2021, um, you know, rename Alpine. Um, you know, we've scored, you know, strong results uh, in the top 10 um, consistently. But obviously, yeah, we want to build on that. We want to progress, um, you know, get faster um, and, you know, catch, um, you know, the, the top three teams, basically. So, yeah, the target is going to be to obviously keep force and uh, get closer to third. And Pierre, welcome to the team. Thank you. An official driver for 2023. How does that feel? Uh, that feels pretty amazing. I think it suits me quite well. I've worked out all, all the winter to fit in <laughs> that suit. Great. But uh, no, I, I must say I'm uh, yeah, extremely excited. What a beautiful, beautiful car. It's a new, new beginning for me, a new, uh, the start of a new journey. And uh, yeah, I must say I'm extremely motivated. Um, and just, yeah, I cannot wait to, to hit the track, yeah. Well, Esteban Pierre is your new teammate, but apparently you already know him very well. We've known each other for quite a few years, yeah. Um, you know, since we were very little, uh, six, six years old, Pierre? Yeah. yeah. We were driving so go-kart together, yeah, like that back then. Um, obviously, yeah, I was going through the memories, um, you know, not too long ago. It's, it's going to be super special. It's slightly too. taller than uh, um, what I remembered. Yeah. Like, uh, I was already like taller than you before, but yeah. now I have grew up a bit. Well, I don't know what you ate at the time, but <laughs> you're just like, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's going to be great to, to uh, you know, write a great story together and I hope we can be successful there. It's really special. It's, it's brilliant to be reunited. The season is going to be very special. I can feel it. I know it. After Alpine finished fourth, of course, last year in the championship, what is possible in 2023 with yourself, Pierre, and Esteban behind the wheel? Well, I think, as uh, I think every, everyone said tonight, you know, Alpine had a fantastic season last year. Really good evolution and progress through the year. And um, yeah, clearly the target for us is to, you know, uh, consolidate force in the championship um, in, in a more dominant way and, and close that gap with the top three. So we'll try to uh, develop um, as, much as, we ca as, as much as we can and have a better rate um, to, to close that gap. But uh, no, personally, I must say I'm super excited. It's a, it's a great project. Um, I yeah, fully believe in this, uh, in this new project and from what I've seen so far at the factory back in France in Viry. Uh, in Enstone, there is just massive potential, and uh, we got the resources, we got the human resources. So now it's just about putting the work, and I'm sure the the, the results are going to follow. Yeah. And Otmar, for 2023, we have a new reserve driver as well. Now, although he can't be with us here tonight because in, he's in Bahrain getting ready for the. Uh, F2 championship, where, where he should be uh, testing, but uh, we would like to announce to all of our Australian friends here and, and others that uh, Jack Doohan will be our reserve driver for 2023. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for, for everything. We wish you, honestly, all the best. I'm sure victories are at the end of the road for you. Just seize it. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Enjoy your season. Make the most of it. And thank you so much, Otmar. Now, let's focus a little more specifically on the A523. And to do that, we have the benefit of the expertise of Matt Harmon, Alpine F1 Team Technical Director, who will explain what is inside this new astonishing car. So, Matt Harmon, please join me on stage. Good evening. Good evening, Jake. After seeing in 22-22 the biggest bulk of rule changes for some time, how has the A523 evolved since last year's car? Well, firstly, good evening, everybody, and uh, good evening, Vic. Um, yeah, it's great to be given the opportunity again to stand here and talk about, you know, the efforts that we put into the A523 car with, the, you know, the teams at both Viri and Enstone. And, um, yeah, to be honest, I'd just like to walk through the car really and, and just kind of talk about front to back what we've changed and, and, and why we've done it. Take it away. To start off, just to link in with what Otmar said about targets, you know, the first thing we did with the 523 is set ourselves some aggressive targets, um, targets that were going to challenge us, but we're going to deliver what we need to do to compete at the right level. So, you know, we started off at the front of the car with the main plane um, of the front wing. Um, we've looked quite extensively at changing the nose concept here. Um, there's a very different structure in here which allows us to, well, gives us more freedom, uh, more freedom to change more elements of the front wing, um, particularly more quickly, and allow us to control that airflow more consistently into the front suspension area. As we move a little bit further back, um, we start talking about the front suspension and the brake cooling systems. You know, the front suspension concept is exactly the same as the A522, but it's not the same in terms of its kinematic and the way it works. Um, we've changed the position of our wishbones uh, quite considerably, again, to help with that pressure and the flow through that area, to make sure that we present that air to the front of the floor in the right attitude, making sure that we can balance the amount of airflow that's going both over the top of the floor and into the diffuser itself, into the front fences. We're always controlling that distribution of mass flow between what goes to the rear of the car and what gets outwashed outside. As we move a little bit further back, we get to the quite important part. You know, we're talking about the cockpit in here, and as we saw earlier, we've, we've got Esteban with us, but we've also got Pierre now, and we've had to work quite carefully to make sure that both those guys are very comfortable in the car. Um, it was great to see that uh, on the recent running of that car that uh, they both were very happy with that, and their controls and their position and their comfort is, was excellent, so that's very important. As we move a little bit further back again, we, we start talking about the, the edges of the floor and the, and the bodywork. This is going to be quite a big hunting ground for us uh, through the season as we look to continue with that very aggressive development pace of the car. 
We've developed this quite considerably last year, and this year we'll do the same again. And as you can see, there is a quite a deep gully that we try and run that mass flow of air to the back of the car, improving the energy at the rear of the car, which is where a lot of our load is, is placed. You will also see a great deal of development on the edge of the floor. Um, this is something, that, again, that will be quite important to us as we develop the floor and we try and control some of those structures there. In the middle of the car, we know we've got a very important section, the power unit, the powertrain in general. Um, we know we've had a few problems in this area on the A52 in the way we've integrated that into the car and it's given us some issues around not finishing races. We've worked on that together collaboratively with my colleague Bruno and his team at Viri to make sure that we've got that reliability back, that we give ourselves the best chance of, of ensuring that we finish those races. And actually, we've very recently run the car on a, on a full powertrain dyno configuration and done an extensive amount of mileage, which basically where we run the whole car on a dyno and check it. And that was very, very good. And there's a lot of confidence. And that great piece of work that we've done together collaboratively has, has shown some great benefits. But on top of that, we've also looked at changing some of the aerodam aerodynamic affecting components. So the heat rejection system, for the example, or the cooling system, as it might be more commonly known, we've taken some of the, the cooling system that we would normally had on the center line and we've reduced it. We know that because we want to try and control some of this mass flow going to the rear of the car. But normally, we would just take that amount of face area and we would put it in the side pod. But actually, the teams have worked really aggressively at improving the efficiency of that system. So actually, we've removed it from there, but we've not put it in here. We've made the system smaller. And also, we've managed to reduce the plenum temperature of the engine as well, which again gives us not only an aerodynamic benefit, but more crank power. As we move a little bit further on, we get to the rear of the floor where we, we may or may not know, but the FIA changed some regulations for us, which was very kind of them. Um, and it actually meant that we needed to lift the floor edge slightly, and that loses us some load at the rear of the car. But we gained that back quite quickly. Our aerodynamics department were very good and effective at gaining that back, and now we've accelerated through that. Now we get more towards the rear of the car and the rear suspension. The rear suspension is a big change for us. We've changed concept. We've gone from a pull rod rear suspension to a push rod. For, for quite a few different reasons. Firstly, you know, we need to take some weight out of our car, and we did have a very um, interesting concept for last year, but this one is more interesting. It's a little bit simpler um, with the push rod, and it's allowed us to take an awful lot of weight out of the rear of the car. Also, we've put a little bit more complexity into the inboard system, such that we've got more modularity for our trackside engineering teams. We need to give them tools to be able to set up the mechanical balance of the car, and that's what they have. But most importantly, we've controlled the airflow through here. It's much cleaner. There's more, there's less blockage so that we can get more air out through the rear of the car. That's really, really important, and it's going to be a good development for us as we move forward. And then lastly, but no means least, we get to the rear wing. And the rear wing is something that we have a few rear wings through the year as we go through different races, but it's all about efficiency. So we're trying to make sure that we have a similar or more load at the rear wing but a much greater efficiency, so less drag. And the way we do that is by optimizing the beam wing, which is the lower section of, of, of the rear wing, this section in here. And that allows us to make sure that we've got that real, real lowest drag in the car. So that, in summary, is where, what we've done with the A523. But just taking a step back and talking globally about the car, something that you hear a lot about with the 2022 vehicles that you had seen on track is we needed to take weight out of the car. And we've had a very aggressive weight reduction program. And it's really pleasing to be able to say that the car will be underweight this year. We will have ballast in the car. And we will be moving it around to optimize that weight distribution, which again is a, a fantastic uh, um, performance tool for us and our trackside engineering teams. So yeah, that's the A523. Look forward to taking it to TO8 and then racing it at race one in Bahrain. Thanks, Matt. Can I just ask quickly, um, can you tell us a little bit about the assembly of, of the parts of the car? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, we're very integrated and we, we, you know, we collaborate quite carefully on the car itself. Um, so, you know, we don't really assemble it. We don't do it in certain sections. You know, we put the car together very much uh, in a collaborative manner. We've got uh, digital mock-up areas. We've got very, very tight collaborative working groups, not just at Enstone or at Viri, but at Viri and Enstone as well. Um, so the way we kind of put the car together is, is a very, very well-defined program, but it's always done in a very collaborative and togetherness manner. And, and I think, you know, we have some geography against us between Viri and Enstone, but at here, as I stand here right now, and I'm sure Bruno will back me up on that, is that we don't let that get in the way. And um, at the moment, we're just finding performance over and over again with those close collaborations. Well, it's a work of art. Thank you so much, Matt, and good luck for the season. Matt Harmon. Thank you. Right, more news, yes, more news to come as we move on to the next part of the programme. 
right now, stay tuned, dear public, as Alpine opens a new chapter in its history. You don't want to miss this. this highly technical sport where the performance of the cars is just as important as the intelligence and the instinct of the drivers supported by the talents of the whole team, Alpine has chosen to give new drivers a chance. This is the ambition of the Race Her programme, which Laurent, you're now going to tell us a bit about, right? Yes, yes, yes.